All right, it's been a little while. Uh, you can see the engine is out of the bike and where the bike usually is, is more or less a blank bench. Uh, that's because I tore it down a few weeks back to get the frame powder coated as well as just kind of generally clean up everything. The bike was looking pretty dingy and it kind of escalated from there. But yeah, today's video is just gonna be me putting the bike back together. Hopefully I can get it back together in this one video. I'm gonna do my best. Um, but there's a, today is Friday the 1st. There's a car show, bike show on Monday I'd like to take the bike to. So the goal is to get it all back together before then, uh, but we'll see what we can do. I got the frame back from powder coat. Uh, that took a couple weeks, but turned out really good. It, the guy who did it did my last frame and he did a good job on that one too. But got the rear sets powder coated, the main frame and the swing arm. And then over here, you can see a majority of the miscellaneous parts. And I've slowly just been trying to, I guess, restore, just clean up, make them look a little bit better. Um, so I haven't done everything yet, but I've done a majority of it. And over here, I finally went ahead and properly painted the tank and tail, tail section. Um, I ended up using a 2K clear as well as just uh, rattle can paints. And it turned out pretty good. I, I still need to wet sand, compound, and polish it to really clean it up, but um, it looks way better than it did, so I'm, I'm really happy with it. I also got some retro badges to put on the tank to kind of tie it all together. Uh, these obviously aren't original, they're just knockoffs, but we'll get those mounted later. So the first thing I need to do is replace the swing arm bushings. As you can see I've already installed one uh, on this side. When I got it powder coated, I have to remove them uh, or else they'll melt. Um, so I replace, I'm replace. i replacing them with uh, bronze oil-infused bushings. They're just off McMaster car. It's a general part number. So I have the rest of them in the freezer at the moment, so I'll start pulling those out and getting them installed. So I've had these bushings in the freezer overnight. It just makes it a lot easier to install them. There we go. All right, got the rear suspension on, which was harder than it should have been, but anytime you have something powder coated, uh, you start running into slight clearance issues. Uh, especially with fitments between like the swing arm and the frame and stuff like that. And so had to file down a couple things, but it fits pretty, pretty good now. I think it's looking really nice. Uh, now comes the actual hard part. So I'm too lazy to take off the triple tree to install it into the frame. I'd rather just install the whole front end as an, as an assembly. Now that being said, um, I'm still using the original roller uh, ball bearings and not tapered roller bearings. So I have to set all the ball bearings into this race. And then I'm going to lift the frame and set it on top of it, hoping that none of those balls go rolling all over my garage. But uh, we'll see what happens. This would be much easier with a second person, but we're gonna see what we can do. surprisingly well. Okay, front end is on. Wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, so that's good. Uh, next thing I wanna do, I think, is start putting the wiring and electronics back on it. 
before I actually uh, mount the engine back into it. I'm gonna take a minute though and try to clean up this wiring harness a little bit. I had waited to fully loom it up just to make sure I didn't have to change anything, but at this point I think it's pretty solid. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and get the battery mounted and then we'll start uh, tying in the wiring harness. All right, I got the wiring harness installed as well as the battery, the rectifier, and a lot of our sensors. Uh, the only thing I haven't put on is the wideband uh, O2 controller because it's just kind of easier to do that with the engine in the bike. So that brings us to the next step is getting this remounted. Um, I made a couple of these little L brackets to bolt onto the bottom of the engine so it's easier to move around and in place. So. I should be able to just, in theory, set it on the bench, put the jack underneath it, jack it up into place, and bolt it. Uh, that's how I did it getting out. Um, we'll see if it's that easy to put it in. Little well, thing's heavier than it looks. The more, the more I'm looking at this, thinking, why don't I just take off the front wheel, drop the frame down to the engine, bolt it up, and then jack everything up at once. Yeah, that seems like a much better idea. Let's do that. Now I'm trying to figure out what the best way is to get this thing on its wheels. And it turns out either I'm overcomplicating it, which is more than likely, or it's just a pain, <clears throat> gonna be a pain in the ass. So my thought process is, originally I was just gonna turn the bike on those mounts, so each side of the bike was hanging over, mount the wheels, but then I have no real good way of getting it back on, turning it back onto the bench. So I thought about pulling it off the front, putting the front wheel on and then pulling it back, but the front wheel's so tall that it's gonna put, once it lifts up on the front wheel, it's gonna put a lot of strain and stress on those mounting points on the engine. I don't wanna risk cracking them. So right now I have the mini bike wheel on the front that we use to transport the bike. My thought process is I have it on now, I can just roll it back onto the bench. It's not gonna lift the front end up that much, but once I get it back on there, I can put the race stand on the rear of the bike, lift it up, and it'll take the weight uh, off those brackets or mounts so I can take those off. And then it would be just like if we got back from the track and we were putting it back to normal. That's the thought process anyways, but we'll see what happens.
All right, guys, after a lot of long hours in the garage, I think this thing is finally officially done. Uh, I, I couldn't be happier with it. It's my favorite build I've done by far. Uh, it's just perfect for me, at least. Um, I didn't talk much about the tank and tail section, so um, those are both rattle canned. I think I said earlier in the video, I just did a 2K clear on them so you can buff and polish them out just like a automotive clear. So the main difference between a 2K clear and a regular clear or regular spray paint clear is this actually has a hardener in it. Um, so you have to pop the bottom and it mixes two parts together and you have about 48 hours to use it until it hardens. And that creates a really nice durable finish. But yeah, like I said, I, I couldn't be happy with it. Got these uh, knockoff badges off eBay. Uh, they're not original to the bike. The original bike had circular emblems, but I like these better. And this HM logo matches the HM logo on the original toolkit that I still have with the bike. But yeah, it, it turned out great. Uh, these number plates I've made off camera they're just for uh, the land speed event. So it stands for, so this is the uh, my race number and then modified twin blown fuel. So twin supercharged and we're running uh, non-pump gas. So running methanol and then 175 CC four stroke. Uh, and then I made this uh, chain guard off camera too to comply with the rules. Um, so there's only, I do have to do one more thing and I have to contact ECTA. I keep forgetting to do it, but I need to know how much of the blower belt needs to be covered. If the whole thing needs to be covered or just the top, I'm not quite sure, but I can whip something out pretty quickly. Uh, we still have about a month until Arkansas for the horsepower harvest, but, uh, we're looking, we're looking like we're in good shape. Uh, I'm not putting the dash on today when we take it to the car show because it's just going to be sitting in the sun for a few hours. So I'm just going to leave it here. We're not going to start it up or anything. And and I can start it and run it without that dash. Uh, it's just nice to have so I know what's going on with the bike. But yeah, um, we're going to get this thing loaded up in the trailer and uh, take it down to the car show.